Today we're working with uh, the figure, learning how to paint figures and how to put them into our paintings in an effective and as simple a manner as possible. You see me here, me here working with a smaller brush, doing some simple figures, single color, torso first, legs second, arms, head, that's usually the sequence I take. What I'm showing you now is how you can vary the pitch of the torso, the um, spread of the legs, the spread of the arms, the position of the head to gain a feeling of animation to your figure. I do this a lot working with uh, figures, just practice them on scrap paper, different poses that suit the scene that I'm going to be doing. Here's a fellow who's walking towards us with the case in his hand. And uh, you notice I start all the figures with the feeling of the torso. That's the biggest shape in the body. It's the shape that we want to render first. Now he's got a suit and a hat. And basically our figures, um, the Greeks gave us a formula of seven and a half heads for an adult person. And um, that is pretty close to being true. We don't measure the figures all the time because it would be too time consuming. We learn to estimate and if we feel a figure is off it's certainly something that we can use to make it uh, look a little better. Here I'm showing you uh, ways to work with the seated figure. You want to establish the plane of the table or chair first and then again start with that torso. Bending it creates a feeling of uh, interest or animation keeping it straight up uh, creates a different feeling. All the, it's funny how we read uh, people by their body language and certainly painters make full use of this when they're creating feelings uh, transmitted through people in their paintings. Here's another average figure. Um, if we make the head a little bigger, this adult becomes a child. If we make it even bigger, becomes a, a small child, bigger, an infant, uh-oh, too big, we turned him into an alien. So head size is very important. It's one of the reasons I like to put it last, um, is that I can really judge how big it needs to be based on how I've created the figure. And I find this sequence works really well. Clothing, a problem for me, um, here I'm showing you how you can make the same figure look like it's walking away simply by raising the shoulders, giving them a head of hair and we can also make it feel like it's this, this same pose is walking towards us putting um, a feeling of the shirt peeking through a suit a little bit of red in the face and the figure is walking towards us so there's things that you can do to simplify the figures Here's a, a way that we can paint a group with a little more simplicity. You notice I'm just putting some blobs of color here. And, miracle, these blobs are now growing some legs. So we have blobs with legs. This was a, a simple group scene, but it's something we'd probably see at Faneuil Hall. On a, uh, bright day, people with their bright clothes, and here we have a few heads on top of the blobs, and that's a group, uh, and it's a quick and effective way to paint a group without bogging down in uh, too many individual parts. Oh, look, at, he's going to be waving at us. How you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, welcome to Faneuil Hall. Take a picture. Oh, she's shopping. That's always a good sign. Uh, you, you see how these little things, they culminate in uh, some very interesting effects. Another thing to consider when doing a lot of people is the placement. Uh, if we're standing on a level surface, basically all the heads of our figures are going to line up. So I'm showing you figures at different places in the picture plane, some very far away, some near and some very close. 
Here's a line that we wouldn't see in nature, but that I use to create that group of people.